Welcome. Greetings to you all again. You welcome you all to Mass Expert Video Tutorials, and this is your course under trigonometry. We are going to look at trigonometry as your course. In this, we will be looking at four units, and the first one is going to deal about trigonometric angles. The second unit is going to deal about circular functions and trigonometric identities. And also, the third part is going to deal about inverse circular functions. And the last one, which is the unit four, is about trigonometric equations. Please trust me, you are going to love everything that entails and at this topic we are going to modeling the idea of uh, trigonometric functions and all that into a real life world situation situation and trust me you will love it all right so let's start all right so let's first look at Trigonometric words, angles, and uh, give meanings to some words, terms, or terminologies. Alright, so the first, the first thing we are looking at under angle edge, uh, trigonometric angles, is one, two distinct points, two distinct points, A and B, determine a line called line what? AB. So we are saying that two distinct points determine a line. For instance, when we talk of a line, this is what? A line. Alright? So this line goes to an, a positive infinity. This goes to negative what? Infinity. Alright. So to determine a line AB, there we need to indicate these two distinct points, these two distinct points, which is A and what? B, in order to determine a distinct point on a line. Two, the portion of the line A B, between A and B, including points A and B themselves, is line segment. It's line segment. So when we talk of line segment, what we mean is that let's say we have a line here, but this is not just a line, but we are saying that the portion of the line AB between A and B including so this line should include the A and B. So there is no exclusion like continue to this side. There is nothing like that. So this will be the A and this will be the B. So this is what we call what? A line segment what? A B. A line segment what? A B. And the third one is the portion of line A B that starts at A and continues through B and point B is called ray A B. Ray A B. And when we are talking of a ray, a ray is different from what? A line. A ray is like this. We have the starting point here. Let's call that A. Then this goes to what? Infinity. So that is what we mean by that. Alright, so that is that for that. Now, it is important for you to note that point A is known as the end point of the what? Of the ray. The point A is known as the end point of the what? Of the ray. Jot it down. The point A here is known as the end point of the ray, and this goes towards and what infinity. Alright. Now let's talk of angles. 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 Now when we talk of angles, what are you to mean by angles? Alright. So what we mean about angle is that an angle is formed by rotating a ray around its end point. By rotating a ray around its end point. 
that we talk with you. The two rays are called the sign of the angle. The two rays are called the sign of the angle. We also say that the starting point or side is called the initial side of the angle, and where it ends is the terminal what side. It's very important for you to take note of these things. We are saying that the two rays are called the side of the what the angle. And the starting point is called the initial side, the starting point. And the end point is called the what? The terminal side. And the end point of the angle is called vertex. The end point of the angle is called vertex. So, all that we are saying is like this. We have the vertex here. This is the initial point. And when it gain an angle, when it gain an angle, that where it will stop is the terminal side. And the same to this one, we have the initial side, the vertex, and the terminal side. It's not always that the terminal side will be acute or obtuse or re uh, re re reflex. It can be at anywhere of the angle. All right. Whether the first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Or whatever. So that is what we mean by that. So uh, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to describe trigonometric what angles. You'll be able to describe trigonometric angles. You'll be able to also determine circular functions and trigonometric what identities and derive inverse circular functions and also calculate trigonometric what equations. That is all about all that we are going to do. And uh, the core topic of trigonometry. All right. So we are moving to positive angles and negative angles. Positive angles and negative angles. We are going to see how we read positive angles and. Negative angle. Okay. So now let's assume we have our S Y plane like this. So first of all, let's look at positive. Positive. Positive angles. So how do we read positive angles? We know that when your watch. When your watch goes this way, it's a two o'clock, the time is three o'clock, four o'clock, and all that. What does it mean? When it goes this way, it means it's going clockwise direction, and this what anti-clockwise what direction. In some books, you will see counterclockwise also. Okay, so that's how it is. Now, the one that goes in the Anti-clockwise direction is where we read positive angles. It's where we read positive what? Angles. And the one that goes and the one that goes this way is also where we read negative angles. Negative angles. Alright. So, for instance, if I'm giving 60 degrees, 60 degrees is positive, so I will assume that positive degrees, we know from here is 0 degrees, here will be 90 degrees, so 60 degrees can be somewhere here, right? That means that from this side to this side is 60 degrees. So because it is positive, so we read it in the anti-clockwise or counterclockwise direction. But if we have negative 60 degrees, for negative 60 degrees, we can read it in the even though all start at zero degrees or the initial uh, side starts from here. But if it's positive, it goes like this. 
okay, if it's negative, it goes like this. So for negative, it will be something like this. Alright, so this will be negative 60 degrees. Negative 60 degrees. So that is how that one too is for that. Alright, so we are going to look at the degree measure. The degree measure. And wait, I will have. the degree measure. The most common unit of measuring angle is degree. It was developed by the Babylonian 400 years ago. To use the degree measure, we assign one, 360 degrees to one complete rotation of a ray. One degree represents one over what? One over 360 of a rotation. 90 degrees represents 1 over 4 of a complete rotation. 180 represents 1 over 2 of a complete of a complete rotation. So you know what this all means. Alright. Now let me give you some points for you to jot down. You are used to some of these things already. That's why I don't want to worry myself right. But you can judge me now. If an angle has measured greater than zero degrees but less than 90 degrees, then it is called an acute angle. You know that acute angle is having a measure of what? Zero degrees. And So that is that for acute what angle? That is acute angle. Acute angle. Right. And we also have obtuse angle. Obtuse. Obtuse angle. That one too. If an angle has measure greater than 90 degrees but less than 180 then it is obtuse angle obtuse angle so that would be 90 degrees less than theta less than 180 so that would be for obtuse angle and we also have a right word angle and that is if an angle has measure angle exactly 90 degrees, it is right angle. So that is that for right angle. You also have when an angle that has measure equal to 180 degrees, that is also a straight angle. A straight angle. And also, if the sum of the measure of two positive angles is 90, then we say that it is complementary angles, complementary angles. And if the sum of the measure of two positive angles is 90 degrees, then, all right, then that will be supplementary what? Angles, supplementary Oh, sorry, there is a mistake here. The, the, the uh, complementary angle adds up to 90 degrees, and the supplementary angle also adds up to what? 180 degree. Alright, so that is that for that. So, try your hands on these questions. We are used to these things already. Right. State the complement and Supplement of 40 degrees. State the complement and supplement of A, 40 degrees. B, 10 degrees. C, 95 degrees. So, that's that for that. So, 
Two, find the measure of each angle in the figure below. Measure of these angles. Since A, we have A here. You have to find the measure of what this angle. Know that it's going to be to add up to what? We also have this one here. 4K. We also have 6K. And you have to find the measure of the angle. So add or equate one eight. Add or equate what? So that's all for that. Okay. So now we are coming to the important part that is converting between decimal degree, degrees, minutes, and seconds. So I'll be back for that.